Management of Neonatal Hypoglycemia It is recommended to screen all infants with risk factors for prolonged or pathologic hypoglycemia. Factors are symptomatic hypoglycemia, large for gestational age, perinatal stress, prematurity or post-term delivery, infant of diabetic mother, family history of genetic hypoglycemia, congenital syndrome, for example, bequith Wiedemann syndrome. Management of asymptomatic infants with hypoglycemia. Zero to four hours of protocol. For all infants with risk factors, the initial feed has to be offered within the first hour of age, and the initial screen of blood glucose level should be performed within 30 minutes after the first feed. First case scenario, you have two hours of old full-term newborn, largely for gestational age. The infant is asymptomatic with blood glucose level 20 mg per deciliter. What is the best next step? Best next step in this case, another feeding, then a check blood glucose level in one hour. So according to the protocol between zero and four hours, if the blood glucose level remains less than 25 mg per deciliter, transfer baby to NICU for IV glucose administration. But if the blood glucose level is between 25 and 40 mg per deciliter, another attempt to feed may be made before progressing with IV glucose administration. Management of asymptomatic infants with hypoglycemia aged 4 to 24 hours so this is 4 to 24 hours of protocol very important to know for newborns aged 4 to 24 hours the feeding is recommended every 2 to 3 hours after the initial feed and the blood glucose level measurements prior to each feed are recommended this is another case scenario. This is a six hour old full term newborn, large for gestational age, asymptomatic with blood glucose level 30 milligrams per deciliter. What is the best next step according to four to 24 hours of protocol? The best next step in this case, refeed and recheck blood glucose level concentration within one hour. Summary of the management of newborns, with uh, hypoglycemia who are asymptomatic and the blood glucose level is less than 35 milligrams per deciliter according to 4 to 24 hours of protocol. So if the blood glucose level is less than 35 milligrams per deciliter, refeed and recheck blood glucose level within one hour. Then after one hour, if the blood glucose remains less than 35 milligrams per deciliter, transfer to NICU for IV glucose administration. If blood glucose level between 35 and 45, continue feeding before initiation of treatment with IV dextrose solution. To summarize what we mentioned before, if you have an infant with hypoglycemia and you offer one feed, after one hour, if the infant is between 0 and 4 hours and the blood glucose less than 25 milligrams per deciliter, IV dextrose is indicated. If the age between 4 and 24 hours and the blood glucose level less than 35 milligrams per deciliter, IV glucose administration is indicated. We have two magic numbers to remember, 25 and 35. 25 if the age between 0 and 4, 35 if the age between 4 and 24 hours. Feeding options after the first episode of hypoglycemia. Dextrose gel. This is the best option, especially for breastfeeding infants. The dose is 200 milligrams per kilo massaged into the buccal mucosa. This is an effective method for treatment of hypoglycemia in asymptomatic late preterm and term infants. The next option is formula feeding. It is inexpensive, readily available, easy to give, has a high carbohydrate content, resulting in a rapid rise of blood glucose concentrations within minutes. But the problem with it increases the risk of interrupting breastfeeding or establishment of breastfeeding. Symptomatic hypoglycemia. Symptoms of neonatal hypoglycemia will include the following sweating, feeding difficulties, poor suck, weak or high pitched cry, tremors, hypothermia, irritability, lethargy, stupor, hypotonia, seizures, coma, apnea, grunting, or tachypnea, cyanosis. These cases they have to be admitted to NICU for IV dextrose. All symptomatic infants with a glucose level less than 40 milligrams per deciliter, they have to be 
admitted if they have symptoms. Infants with persistent hypoglycemia despite increased feeding frequency, as we mentioned before in the previous slides, asymptomatic at risk infants with extremely low blood glucose level concentration, less than 25 milligrams per deciliter in the first four hours of life, or less than 35 milligrams per deciliter at four to 24 hours of life. Management of neonatal hypoglycemia in neonatal intensive unit. IV glucose is given as a bolus. So start with a bolus of 200 milligrams per kilo, which is D10 at 2 ml per kilo bolus. After the bolus, you do continuous infusion of dextrose D10 at 5 to 8 milligrams per kilo per minute, which is 80 to 100 ml uh, per kilo per day. Then you divide by 24 hours will give you the rate. To maintain blood glucose levels of 40 to 50 milligrams per deciliter. This is the end. Thank you. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you. Presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams. Crafted by Dr. Osama Naga a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a last-minute review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last-Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams.